fight. <laughs> You win. Das war knapp. How's it going guys? It's uh, Pepperbrief Too Spicy here. Hope you guys are doing alright. And uh, welcome to the first episode of Tekken 7 101, where we're going to teach you everything you need to know about how to play this game, ranging from the very basics all the way to some of the advanced metagame in Tekken 7, um, and in fighting games in general a little bit, and you know, how to really just get really, uh, you know, get good with the game and at the same time learning how to really explore yourself and you know not necessarily need to rely on a crutch to be good at this game and uh, even in, in the sense that this is not going to be a strictly competitive this is uh, for general purposes of just you know bettering your time with the game and bettering yourself at being uh, you know having fun with the game so because I always say it's really important to understand a game especially a fighting game as much as you can as long as you have the time to do it so, uh, firstly, I want to apologize how late this took to came out uh, in the week that I was going to record uh, Tekken 7 101. Uh, my recording uh, capture card broke, and I had to get another one in the mail, and then I found all these problems that the capture card took up the slot on my computer that I needed, the PCI slot, and then all this other stuff. But anyways, uh, let's get down to it. So, in this first episode, we're going to discuss uh, the uh, very basics of the game first, and uh, it's a little bit late for that. A lot of people who want to play the game have it already, and they probably understand a lot of the stuff already. But just in case that you're still a little bit unfamiliar with it, or you're getting Tekken 7 for the first time, um, well, let's go ahead and get over it anyway. So the very first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the notations in the game, because uh, there are two major community notations uh, for Tekken. And when I mean notation, I'm talking about how people describe the uh, types of attacks and movement in the game. So, of course, in this game, you have attacks such as your left punch and your right punch, etc. But not everybody describes uh, such attacks that way because, um, you know, because of the varying consoles, there's Xbox One, PS4, and uh, PC, not everybody uses the same controller, so you can't say square, then triangle, because, you know, an Xbox person might get a little bit confused or a PS4 first and might get confused when you say uh, A button or B button. It's a little bit confusing. So uh, to alleviate the multi multiple console and arcade uh, you know, differences, people have come up with this notation system. There are two major kinds of notation. There's Western notation and Eastern notation. Western referring to Western civilization, so like, you know, North America, Europe, so on and so forth. And then Eastern referring mostly to Japan and Korea. Uh, in Asia in general. Um, then the Western notation is the one I am the most familiar with, but both I'm familiar with. So in the Western notation, you have uh, your four face buttons and they're like numbers. So your left punch is one, your right punch is two, your left kick is three, and your, four, and your right kick is four. Um, and movement is very self-explanatory. Back is obviously B, and then, you know, forward is F, and then going diagonal backwards, down left, so that's down back because you're going backwards and down at the same time, so that's down back. And if you want to go forward and down at the same time, that's down forward. And the same thing for upwards, so up forward would be, of course, jumping towards them, and up back would be jumping back away from them, or just the, just the motion in general. So that's very, very simple. So if I wanted to do a move that was down forward and one, it would be this. This is the motion of down and forward while plusing the left attack button at the same time. Um, there are a couple more uh, notation specifics to that. There is stuff such as a quick cancel, I mean a quick press rather, which is uh, two tilde one for this move, poison arrow, which is pressing two buttons at the same time. Uh, two buttons very close next to each other. And of course there is the plus uh, notation, which will indicate when you press two things at the same time. So this is forward plus one plus two. So forward plus one plus two. Uh, this is three plus four, so both kicks at the same time. And uh, you guess you'll just get the hang of it, etc. Uh, it looks a little bit confusing at first, but once you just start memorizing that, you know, this is not really an LP, but it's more of a one, then it'll start to get a little bit more confused, uh, simple. And then the, the Asian notation is a little bit more simple for some people. Um, I mostly used it when I played a lot of Soul Calibur, and it works like this. So you have uh, a numpad notation for your movement. 
So instead of backwards for backwards, it's uh, backwards or backwards. Instead of backwards or backwards, it is uh, four, uh, four for going backwards. Imagine a telephone number pad, a keypad, and that's basically how it works. So six would be forward, uh, seven would be up back, one would be down back, uh, three would be down forward, and so on and so forth. And then five would just be neutral, as in pressing no buttons at all. Um, and, in, and because you're using numbers for the, uh, for the uh, movement, you cannot use numbers for the attacks. So instead of uh, numbers for the attacks, the uh, Asian players prefer to say LP, right P, I mean RP, LK, and RK. Whichever one you find use, uh, you know, uh, more comfortable with, just stick with it, and uh, you know, nobody will really blame you for it. Um, and that's the basic notations for it, and it'll be a lot simpler in the long run uh, to teach you how to play Tekken or so forth, or teach you how to explore the game. Because I'm going to be referring to these notations a lot instead of just saying the move names. Because, you know, there are a lot of move names in the game and it's hard to memorize all of them. And uh, it would be kind of confusing, like I said, to say, like, you know, forward, forward, D-pad, and then uh, circle. Like, not everyone's going to know what that means. Alright, so that's the notation. And once you've got that down, we can move on to the basics of the game. So the basics, of course, is to defeat your opponent within 60 seconds. The opponent who with the highest health, if 60 seconds runs out and neither player is KO'd, the high player with the higher percent health will win, and it is possible to get a draw in this game if both players knock each other out at the same time, or both players have the exact same health percentage when the timer runs out. You need to win best 3 out of 5 games to win, so that means first to 3 basically, and then you can only have a max of 2 wins per person before a game can be decided by the final round. The characters in the game have 170 health, so as you can see in the damage counter on the left side, if I do 10 damage, now the opponent only has 160 health and I need to do this, you know, uh, 16 more times to kill the opponent. But you, you'll know what I mean. Basically, you need a total of 170 hits on the point, and 170 point, total points worth of damage to kill the opponent. Um, and uh, of course, to do that, you need to hit them a lot, but there are a lot of different ways to hit them. And before we get into the actual hitting of the opponent, I want to talk about how to move in this game. So moving is very self-explanatory. Forward goes towards the opponent, backwards goes away from the opponent. Um, pressing it once will do a little tap forward, pressing it once will do a little tap back. Uh, holding back, of course, will make you walk instead. Uh, up and down will take you into the various directions. So down will always take you to your right side and up will always take you to your left side. On two player, it is kind of the opposite. So down will take you to your left side and right will take you to their, uh, I mean up will take you to your right side because of the uh, direction switch. So uh, with that being said, there are a couple other ways to move in this game. So up, uh, holding it up will make you sidewalk. And sidewalking is sort of like a continuous sidestep. Uh, that's useful for the purposes of avoiding attacks, but I'll get more into that later because that's a little bit complex to, uh, to understand right now. Same for holding down, you will sidewalk around your opponent and you just keep going. Um, and then, of course, you have a forward dash and a back dash. Forward dash is pretty self explanatory, you just keep forward dashing and you can keep going to your opponent, you just keep going, 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 going. The other kind of movement is the back dash. Now, back dash is, is really important because it it makes you move away really fast. Now, describing why moving away really quickly can be a little bit complicated, but I will basically say that if a, uh, in short, if an opponent's attack misses, they are very, very, very vulnerable. Um, and when an opponent's attack misses, it has a great chance of missing if you back dash away from it. Um, in the example that if Kazumi threw out a one jab and I was right here and I blocked it, Instead, if I backdashed away from it, so normally if I block it, I'm um, nothing can happen, right? It's just that's something I have to deal with. But if I make the move whiff like this, which is basically called a whiff when a move whiff, when a move misses, it's called a whiff. Kazumi cannot do anything, and I can, and I can do something. So basically, during this time, I can attack Kazumi for free. and so on and so forth. So making a move with uh, from your opponent is very, very useful. And this is where the backdash becomes really useful. It's because, you know, it's one, one minute you're standing still and the next minute you move back a little bit and the opponent's attack suddenly misses because they didn't think you were gonna move back and then they're very vulnerable to an attack. Um, but unfortunately, this is not the fastest way to utilize the advantage of the backdash. So what we have here in Tekken, which is a very uh, important skill to learn in uh, Tekken, is the backdash cancel. It is also known as a Korean backdash uh, in some places. The backdash current cancel is basically backdashing with just back back and then canceling it with a crouch and then pressing back back again. So that motion once again is back back, down back, back back. 
So you can see in the command history that motion is right there, the back back into the down back into the back back. And it is the correct motion for it. There are some variations which are a little bit worse in comparison. Uh, the reason why the back dash cancel is very good is because you, instead of moving slow like this, you'll be able to move like this. Now that was a little bit messy because I'm not very uh, good with a clean backdash, especially on a uh, uh, controller, but uh, that is basically the advantage of it. As you can see, I closed, I moved away from Kazumi very, very quickly as opposed to me moving just with the normal back, 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 back. Now a change in Tekken 7 compared to other Tekkens uh, previously was that in the previous Tekkens, doing this means you would have to always have your finger on the back motion. And uh, of course, holding back in this game, you will be able to block. So if you never let go of the back direction while you're doing this, technically you will be invulnerable to moves because you're always blocking while you're moving back. Now the change in Tekken 7 was that now you don't have to do that because now you can press back all the time and you will still be able to block. While that is very useful, at the same time you still do not move back very fast, so learning the Korean backdash or the backdash cancel is really important. Now as you can see here, I'm doing a sloppy version, which is back, back, quarter, circle, back, 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 quarter, circle, back. So that's down, down, back, back. Um, it is okay to have that as your type of backdash, but it is not the best version because there is a small window where you can be attacked in between the backdash canceling. Um, and it's something that takes a lot to get, or some getting used to, but it trust me when I say it pays out in the long run. Um, movement is important in this game. It's not everything, but it, it is something that can save you or, you know, help you become a really strong player if your movement is very solid. Um, explaining that in detail would be a little bit more and too advanced right now, so I'm just going to gloss over and say practice the backdash cancel, and once you've got it down, you can already see the advantages of it when you start playing. Alright, with movement out of the way, let's talk about how do you kill your opponent into the ground. <laughs> Alright, so you have three types of attack directions. You have your high attacks, your mid attacks, and your low attacks. The highs and mids are both blocked by holding back. Um, you will also do a neutral guard if you do not hold any direction at all. However, if you are hit by a single low, another attack that comes from any other direction will stop the neutral guard. So neutral guarding isn't really something you should do, you should always try to hold back to block. It's sort of a general rule that when attack coming at you, you generally want to hold back. Now the highs and mids are stopped all by holding uh, back. However, in the situation that a low attack comes, you will not be able to stop it by holding back. Uh, for example here, I'm going to start hitting Kazumi with a lot of high attacks. However, she's going to keep blocking them. But if I throw in a single low, she will not be able to block it even though she is holding back. This is because lows uh, ignore standing guards. So this in general is to prevent the situation that uh, someone is invulnerable. So to negate someone's defense, you have to do a low. Now to stop a low attack, you have to do a crouch block. It's like so, which is holding down back. Now unlike holding back when you're blocking, you when you're holding back while blocking, uh, you move backwards. When you're holding black bottom, holding block by crouch blocking, you only crouch block and you do not move at all. Now, you would think like, well, if I can stop all those attacks by crouch blocking, what's the point of even standing blocking? Well, when you low block, you do not stop mids, and mids are generally the stronger attacks in the game, such as that. See, uh, Law's strongest low attack is that. However, if you are crouch blocking it, I can do this to you. And as you can see, that's very dangerous. So generally, you want to avoid mid attacks and high attacks as well, as much as possible, but especially mid attacks, because mid attacks generally are a lot of combo starters, or what we call launchers, because in Tekken, the combo system is known as juggling. So a lot of launchers uh, start from mid, so you don't want to always block low, because that means that the opponent can just run up to you and start launching you for free, and you don't want that to happen. So what you want to do is by block, you want to block standing up most of the time because you eliminate two out of three uh, attack options by blocking standing up. Now a low can be really annoying, I understand that it really is going to get in your face a lot, but in general you want to be able to react to the low and block it instead of always just preemptively crouch blocking because that is a very dangerous gamble. Now there are some situations where you will be forced to guess whether a uh, mid attack or a low attack is coming, but uh, for the basics of the of the you know of the tutorial, 
basically just yes. Blocking, blocking standing up is the superior option in most cases. Um, there is also the special mid, which as you can see, it said middle, but it was marked by a green hit spark. This means that this attack can be blocked standing up or blocked crouching. Um, and there is one more type of attack that can ignore blocking, and that is the throw. The throw is everybody has three throws at a minimum. And there are two types of throws for the main part. There are your one throws, which is one plus three, and there is your two throws, which is two plus four. Now, throws in general always do 35 damage, and they have a short range, but you can extend the range by doing forward one plus, I mean, forward plus the, da the, the throw motion. So this would be forward one plus three, and forward two plus four. The problem with doing that, however, is that the throw comes out a little bit slower. Um, and throws are unblockable, but they are high attacks. So high attacks are automatically uh, ducked if you crouch. So if I do another jab, that Kazumi will automatically duck it. Uh, a move missing on you is called a crush. Um, normally, uh, this high attack would hit Kazumi at this range, but because she is ducking, her hurt box, or rather the character model, or what have you would call it, is missing, making the move miss because I'm not actually hitting Kazumi, I'm actually just punching the air. There are certain moves in the game, such as this move, Down Three Plus Four, which move makes the character move uh, to a smaller hurt box size, so that will actually make certain moves miss such as uh, this move, Dragon Tail, uh, will actually make high attacks and some mid attacks miss over it, which is called a crush. Um, but in the sense, yes, that throws cannot be blocked. So how do you stop a throw? There are two ways to stop a throw. You now in Tekken 7, thankfully, throws have become a lot easier to stop because in previous games, throws were very dangerous to uh, newer players and even mid-level players because they were very fast and difficult to stop once they connected. But lo and behold, it is definitely possible to stop throws. To stop a throw, you have to press uh, left or right punch when a throw connects, for the most part. For example, th Kazumi's gonna throw me here with a one throw, which is a left arm throw. There are two types of throws, like I said. The one, the left, well, the left throw, which is done with one plus three, Law extends his arm, his left arm first. And the two throw, which is two plus four, uh, Law extends his right arm first. In previous games, that was sort of important where you had to know which arms connected first. And for the most part, it isn't as important here because either a type of throw can be broken by pressing 1 or 2 when the throw connects. So I'll press 1 here and Kazumi throw will be broken and I will be safe. Um, and there is a small window when the throw connects that you can be able to stop it. Now there is going to be a part of the attack where if you took too long to press 1 or 2 to break the throw, then you are going to get thrown and it's going to hurt. Now, uh, there are a th there is a second type of throw, which is particularly dangerous. While there is the one and two throws, they both have the same break, so they're kind of in the same category and they're both generic, everybody has these kinds of throws. Now, uh, the second type of throw is the command throw, and the command throw is a special type of throw and everybody's command throw is a little bit different. While everybody has a th one throw and a through throw, uh, command throws are different for everybody. For example, Law's command throw, forward, forward, three plus four, launches the opponent into the air. While it does only 10 damage, this actually starts a combo. Like so. So while a normal throw would only do 35, because of Law's throw, command throw is a combo starter, it actually creates a, uh, com a combo starting situation, and in the long run, that is a lot more damage. So, uh, uh, command throws are usually the 1 plus 2 break, as you can see, both arms attack at the same time, and they usually have a tighter window to break the throw. So, to stop a both arm throw, you would have to do 1 plus 2, which would stop a uh, 1 plus 2 throw as well. Um, and there are two other types of throws in the other situations, which is your side throws, your back throws, and uh, some other command throws, but I'm not going to get into that too much right now. Just know that throws are a way to stop opponent's uh, defensive game. Now there are also the two new types of attacks which are introduced into Tekken 7, which is the Power Crush and the Rage Drive. And there is also a call known as the Rage Heart, which is also known as a Super. Um, the uh, Power Crush is a new type of attack, which is basically a move which ignores hit stun. Uh, of course, when you get attacked and you get hit, you cannot attack until the uh, opponent is done attacking you because you got hit and obviously you're stunned for a little bit. However, a power crush would be a move which ignores that. 
For example, Kazumi is going to punch me and I'm going to armor through it, as they say, because a general term in fighting games for moves that ignore hit stun is a armor move. As you can see, even though I was hit by Kazumi, my power crush still went clean through and actually out damaged Kazumi for a lot of the damage that she dealt to me. Um, these are useful for varying situations, and I'll go into more into detail, detail with them later. But just know that it is a move that can be abused to stop an opponent that is being very aggressive on you. Um, but uh, then the power crush is not invincible. Some power crushes. Uh, maybe even all of them actually have a late start up into the armor part of the move. So the minute I press forward 4-3, forward which is Law's Power Crush, it does not mean that I am immediately invulnerable. It takes a little bit for the armor portion of the move to start up. Okay, and the other part of Power Crushes is that it can be stopped if a low connects or a throw connects. Power Crushes will always be stopped immediately and be affected by hit stun if a throw or a low hits them at any point during the Power Crush attack. Now, the uh, second type of attack is the Rage Drive, and you can't really talk about Rage Drive without, without talking about Rage. Rage is a special type of uh, state that you enter when you reach about 15% health left. Rage is indicated by your character glowing red and your health bar glowing red and the sound indicating when you enter it, such as that sound. Uh, rage Mode makes all of your attacks do a little bit more damage. See, Back 4-3 did 37 damage uh, with Rage on, but if I took Rage off, it only did 34. So there is about 5% damage increase on all of your moves. And that does matter quite a bit when you have rage, especially when you attack with moves that have a lot of damage in them already. So you will and you will be in rage state until you either expend your rage art, your rage drive, or you finish the round either by you dying or the opponent uh, dying. Uh, and then you will leave rage mode when the next round starts and so on and so forth. The rage drive is a move which is generally known in fighting games as an EX move. An EX move would be a move that is the same move that you had normally. For example, Law's Dragon Tail looks like this normally, but the rage drive version of it looks like this. As you can see, it did more damage and had a different animation and the blue sparks indicated that it was a rage drive. Now, because this is training mode, I have rage again, but normally once I did this, there's this move. I would lose my rage, and it actually did lose my rage during the attack of the move. So to practice that, you know, you don't enter rage again in an impractical and impossible situation in a real match in training mode. So these moves have varying purposes, and some of them deal more damage, some of them are very hard to block, some of them create a situation that is very advantageous for you, some of them extend combos. Everyone, everyone's, every character's rage drive is a little bit different. Um, and the other type of attack is the Rage Art, which is a new mechanic in Tekken 7, which is basically a move that starts up at varying different levels of speed. And the Rage Art acts like a power crush. So any attack that hits it will be, uh, the hit stun will be ignored. However, a Rage Art also ignores throws and lows. So this means that uh, any low and throw that connects on a Rage Art will be immediately ignored, even though you will still take damage. The lower your health is and the more damage you took during the Rage Art actually determines the damage of your Rage Art. And generally, Rage Arts do about 55 damage normally. And they do a lot of damage, but they also they are better used when attacked uh, without of a combo. For example, I will do a Rage Art during a combo. And you will see that it's starting to do a little bit less damage. It did, doing the extra two hits before that Rage Art actually created a damage less situation. Now the reason that is, is because doing a Rage Art or any kind of move in consecutive motion actually makes the damage uh, what you would call scale. So for example, this one jab does seven damage normally, but if I launched into the air and did a one jab, it only did four damage. This is because of a, of a mechanic called damage scaling. Damage scaling is when the longer that someone is in the combo state the m and the more hits they take, the less damage they will take. This is to prevent combos that will actually kill up an opponent in uh, one combo. Uh, even though some of those do exist in the game, they're usually very impractical and extremely situational. The damage can be scaled to a minimum of 30%. And also when you're on the floor, you also take less damage overall. So when you're in the air, however, as you can see, it's going to scale incredibly fast as I continue to hit Kazumi. And now I'm doing less and less, less damage every hit. So ideally, the way to mix in a combo, which now I will begin to talk about combos, 
is a combo works in the sense that if you combo someone, you want to make sure that you do as much damage with us having as little hits as possible. So, even though I will do like a very long combo here, 6 hits that does 30, 6, 38, I can do a stronger combo with even less hits. I did 43 and I did 1 hit less and I think I can even do more than that as well. 44 and that was also less hits than the six hits so you can kind of understand the concept behind uh, damage scaling um, And combos in this game are generally that kind of mechanic where the uh, the the objective of your combo or the strategy of your combo is As few hits as possible, but as much much damage as possible at the same time um, combos in this game sort of have a structure which is launch strong move tailspin move and then ender which is right there so this is the launch the basic uh sandwich of a combo basically if you're going from top to bottom um it starts with a you know a move that launches in the air the strongest move you can hit them with and then a move that will cause the screw attack spate uh, state. A screw attack, by the way, is any move that will cause that special type of stun state in the air. This allows you to extend your combos and that will allow you to do more damage. And then once they're in the screw state, they're on the floor but they're still stunned. So you do your strongest move that will reach at the same time to end the combo at a later time. Um, but that is the basics of the combo. Now I know some people are generally have a disdain for juggles and combos in general. And if they don't want to use them, that's completely up to them. I can't stop them or no one can really stop them. But uh, in that sense, I generally disagree with the idea that combos are a treat because combos is something that everybody can do. Every character in the game can do a combo. So in my opinion, it's not really a cheap thing if it's also available to you. Now, uh, the idea of a move being cheap, such as this, um, that kind of move, I'm not really going to explain why that's cheap, or uh, something like uh, like that, or maybe something like, like this is a little bit cheap too, and that is because something that's something Kazumi can't do, and that's kind of scenario, sure, you could call it cheap, but a combo, I would never call cheap, because combos are always something that every character in the game can do. So they're not uh, considered cheap, in my opinion. Still going to be really useful. And uh, there is one more thing that we're going to cover in this today's tutorial, which is what you what do you do when you get knocked down? Um, there is, of course, two types of types of states in the game. There's standing up, and there's being on the floor. Of course, launching into the air, you cannot do anything about it when you're in the air because you have to wait until the opponent is done attacking you. Because think about it like this, when you are in the air, you are still in a hit stun until you hit the ground. And that ground does not count, actually, if you got hit by a screw attack because you're still in a stun state. So, the other time that uh, you have a different kind of uh, game plan is when you are on the floor, like this. Now, Kazumi got up there in a very different kind of way. Now, if I hit them like this, Kazumi got up with a quick roll. Now, the the ground game in the game, which is also known as Okazemi, which refers in Japanese to the ground game, um, is a sort of a complicated matter, but is a lot simplified in Tekken 7. But there are two basics that I want to want you to know when you're talking about ground game, in the very basic sense. When you are grounded in Tekken, your objective is to get up as quickly as possible. When you are on the ground, you cannot defend yourself, so therefore you are free to attack like that. Uh, so when you're on the ground, you are unable to defend yourself. So that move was pretty much guaranteed on Kazumi because she could not do anything about it. Same with this move. So you do not want to stay on the ground, generally. You want to get up as quickly as possible. And there are there is uh, two primary ways to do this. Uh, most of the moves that knock you on the floor will leave you in what's called a soft knockdown state, which means that you are able to move like this. That, what Kazumi did, was a tech roll. A tech roll is when you press any of the attack buttons as soon as you hit the ground, and you will quickly get up like that. This moves you a little bit to the opponent's sides, and it makes you get up really, really quickly into a defensive, uh, you know, able to defend yourself and attack as well if you want. So this is really, really, really useful. Um, in that you will be able to just start fighting back immediately. Now the second type of being attacked, I mean being put on the ground, is the hard knockdown, which is like this. You can see in this scenario, Kazumi did not get up the normal way, which, uh, which was being shown earlier, the tech roll, because of the way this move knocked her on the ground. 
This kind of move with knock you on the ground is referred to as hard knockdown. A hard knockdown move prevents you from getting a tech roll and makes you get up a lot slower. These kinds of moves are used to make an opponent more, uh, make it harder for an opponent to get up and allows uh, Law in this scenario to do something a little bit more such as that. See, in that scenario, I was able to hit Kazumi with my down back three. If I launched Kazumi, and then did a down back three, Kazumi was able to block it, as you can see there. So, the hard knockdown makes it harder to get up, but any move that knocks you down with a soft knockdown... Well, getting up backwards is kind of the fastest motion to get off the floor. Uh, there are scenarios where you don't want to do this, and that is because during this whole time that you are getting up off the floor, you are actually vulnerable a little bit. So, I can actually attack Kazumi, um if I was able to get up to her and chase her, even though she's getting up backwards like that. Normally in Tekken, uh, it would be a bad idea to hold back to get up, because it's very uh, slow and unsafe, but in Tekken 7, holding back to get up is not the worst option, but of course, when you can tech roll, always go for the tech roll since it is the safest option. So that's all for the basic mechanics of Tekken 7 uh, this episode, and in the next episode, which will be ep Tekken 7 101B, I'm actually going to talk about how you are going to pick a character and what a command list actually looks like. Now, because I know a lot of people when they look at the command list, they're like, whoa, what is that? What is this? This looks like a good move, and when it's actually a bad move. I will also be talking about how to choose your character, because there are many characters in this game, and they all have a diversity of playstyles, and I want to help you choose the one that best fits you. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this stuff, just subscribe to my channel, Therapy Too Spicy, and follow me on Twitter. And I hate plugins, but I do what I gotta do. Thank you guys for watching so much, and I hope to see you next time. See ya.